Well, this is not a drill, people. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing all right today. Welcome back to Football Therapy and I guess to Chelsea News because this really kind of is Chelsea News. And today we're talking about one story, the gargantuan story, probably the biggest story in football right now, and that is the return of football. Yes, indeed, the Premier League is about to return on the 17th of June. The teams that have a game in hand are going to play their game. And then the 20th of June is when the league's first official, I guess, next match weekend starts, match day starts, game week, whatever you want to call it. Football is back now. Now, I love football. I'm a content creator. I work in football. But just because it's back, I don't want to like scream out. I'm a huge, huge advocate for its resumption and return. I, like many of you, have my concerns regarding its return about health, the NHS. Like, I don't want to be one of these people that are super gassed on its return and then something terrible happens. I am cautious, but like many people who are just football fans, you have to be looking forward to football being back, provided it's safe. So in this video, we're gonna talk about its implications and the ramifications, I suppose, and just talk about the Chelsea team and what we can, we can expect, if I can talk, for the rest of the 2019-20 season. Mental. It just seems like we've been away for so long. Anyway, before I do start talking about the return of football, quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy, hit the bell notifications icon, only if you like daily Chelsea Football Club content. If you don't, I wouldn't subscribe. But if you do, subscribe, and why not drop me a like to support me? All right, let's get into it. Although we are still in a pandemic and it, you know, things are far from okay, the Bundesliga's resumption of football over in Germany has generally been a great success. English football had phase one return to training, not many people tested positive for the virus, entered phase two, and generally the next round of uh, testing as well looked very, very positive. Now they can emulate what went so well in the Bundesliga, everyone's come together, and yes, it's been confirmed, like most of us, I guess, assumed it would be, it's been confirmed that it will return in the latter stages of next month, like I said, the 17th initially, and then properly on the 20th of June. So, off the bat, this means Liverpool are champions of England. That's probably the biggest thing you'll see on Twitter and social media. All the Scousers are mega gassed. Understandably, I suppose, they get to finish out the season, play the games, and regardless, I imagine there will always be an asterisk next to this title win, and most Liverpool fans would probably admit that just because it was a global pandemic. <laughs> You know, nothing will ever be the same for the remaining games of the season as they were for the first part of the season. So it's almost like a different competition in many ways. So they've absolutely earned the title. There's no dispute of that, but there will remain an asterisk next to it. And to be honest, I think most Liverpool fans would be like, yeah, whatever, man, we'll probably go and win it next year. So whatever, we'll see what happens. Teams fighting relegation are going to have to basically G up themselves again and try and get back into the fight of the Premier League. And of course, teams like Chelsea Football Club are going to try their hardest to stay in a European spot. So let's talk about Chelsea. Chelsea are in fourth and there's very, very real risk of Sheffield United and Manchester United taking their fourth spot. Frank Lampard's Blues were in a really good spot actually before the pause to football came. Obviously, annihilating Liverpool, annihilating eliminating <laughs> annihilating it was a you know comprehensive 2 0 win but maybe not quite annihilating eliminating liverpool from the fa cup with the billy gilmore master class and of course the 4 0 beating of carlo ancelotti's everton with yeah another billy gilmore master class kepa rita balaga returned to goal after sitting some time out after being in poor form He'd come back, he'd played really well in these two games, and everything was looking pretty cushy for Chelsea. It did look like they were going to have a battle of it with Man United, which they will still have. But generally, things were looking pretty good. To be honest, the likes of Liverpool probably, ironically, benefit from the break most. Because they weren't in the greatest of form. They got eliminated from the Champions League uh, by Atletico Madrid. They got eliminated from the FA Cup by Chelsea in a sh relatively short period of time. So, although Chelsea 
stopped playing football while in a good vein of form, they also had the opportunity for players to get fit. Now, I'm going to put a pin in that just for one moment. It's not just Chelsea. Well, can Paul Pogba play for Man United now with Bruno Fernandes in the midfield? How's that going to work? Is Harry Kane fit to play again for Tottenham? Also, Marcus Rashford for Man United. If he's good and fit and firing to go again, he is having an excellent season. They could be much more dangerous at Manchester United. And they were playing pretty well prior as well. So there's a lot to think about in the race for the top four. But anyway, back to Chelsea. Chelsea will now have their injured players back. One of the injured players that came back to fitness probably won't be playing, and that's of course N'Golo Kante, who has reservations regarding the resumptuous resumption uh, of football. And understandably, Frank Lampard's spoken about it. Everyone supports the player's decision. So if he doesn't want to play, he doesn't have to. But Chelsea have midfielders. They've got Mason Mount, who's playing very, very well in that left centre mid spot before the pause. Even Ross Barkley was looking a lot better in the latest stages of this Premier League season. And of course, all of those players did benefit a lot from the excellent performances from young Billy Gilmore, who was basically looking like an absolute beast. And if I were Frank Lampard, when the resumption of football does come back on the 20th, I would seriously consider playing Billy Gilmore maybe immediately over another midfield option, which is, of course, Chelsea's Jorginho. As well, in the midfield, they have arguably Chelsea's player of the season, Matteo Kovacic, who has been absolutely excellent for Chelsea this season. Provided everyone's fit and raring to go, the midfield should not be a problem. And generally, the win percentage for Chelsea has been better without N'Golo Kante in the side, as opposed to when he's in it. Now, I don't want to say... I've always maintained how brilliant Kante is. Maybe it's a chemistry thing. Maybe it was because he's injured. But what I'm trying to say is Chelsea can survive without Kante playing. And in the front line as well, man, Chelsea had injuries to Tammy Abraham, Christian Pulisic, Callum Hudson-Odoi, who are all back now. Chelsea were playing Pedro, Willian and Giroud, the OAP front three, as I was calling them when football was still on. So, the, you know, front line options are back. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, how did I forget him? I've, I haven't forgot him. Here he is, I'm talking about him now. What an absolutely massive player for Chelsea Ruben Loftus-Cheek is. Now, we can't expect him to immediately drop in and have that same effect as he did last campaign prior to injury. But damn, Chelsea have got a lot of players to choose from now. You know, Reese James, a bunch of centre-backs, Kepa back in form, Billy Gilmore offering so much. Chelsea should be raring to go and to basically hold on to that fourth spot. Now, another thing worth mentioning, which I'm not sure is going to be affected, is as things stand or where things stopped, Manchester City were banned from the next two seasons of the Champions League, basically meaning fifth spot in the Premier League qualifies for the Champions League next season. Now, I don't know what's happening. I don't even really know what's happening with the Champions League this season. There was talk of it resuming in August or some sort of concentrated, super fast Champions League campaign. Now, City going to the Court of Arbitration of Sport, they might put a pause in that so they can play next season's Champions League and it postpones the two year ban maybe i'm not entirely sure i'll have to look that up and get back to you so chelsea cannot rely on fifth spot being a champions league spot and to be honest if things go wrong for chelsea both sheffield united and manchester united could overtake them so really they can't be thinking about ifs and buts and fourths and or fifth place rather they need to be thinking about themselves and 100 percent securing that fourth spot now as things stand chelsea are still heavy favorites to finish in the top four over Manchester United. But of course, anything can happen, and we're living in like uncharted territory here, man. Nothing like this has ever happened in football. So we have no idea how it's gonna work, how teams are gonna come back, where they're gonna play. I mean, it's, it's, I, people are saying it won't be the neutral venues, it's gonna be home in a way. But what's the fixture list gonna look like? We know it's gonna be concentrated amount of football. The Premier League have been offered the ability to have five substitutions, like the Bundesliga. As of yet, they haven't accepted it, but I kind of assume they will. You can't make five pauses through the game, it's still only three windows for substitutions, but you can make five substitutions to sort of save the fatigue of player, players because they haven't had a much time of like a mini pre-season to get back into things, but also a concentrated amount of games coming so thick and fast. They've got to be ready and they've got to, you know, look after themselves physically. So the five substitutions can help that. Basically, man, incredible scenes. We're starting up again. Who knows how it's going to go? Chelsea back in business. You know, Liverpool probably win the league. I mean, it's going to be weird trophy lift for them. It, well, it will be an empty stadium. It's going to be peculiar. 
that will be peculiar. Anyway, the Bundesliga have put on entertaining games. The quality of football was high, and I expect the same from the Premier League. Provided everything is done safely and securely, I'm excited for the experience to come back. And hopefully, like some broadcasters did on the Bundesliga, they can audio mix certain noises in, like applause for good passes. I, it sounds bad when I say it, but I watched the game... Uh, it might have been the Der Klassiker, but it was really, really impressive the way they mixed in the audio, and it was perfect. They obviously matched the levels from an actual game, and to be honest, man, you'd only notice it was behind closed doors if you saw the seats every now and again. In terms of the audio, it was perfect, so maybe they should do that in the Premier League. I don't know, but I'm really keen to get your thoughts and opinions on this. Football is back, man. How do you feel about it? What do you expect? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. No matter what it is, as long as it's about the Premier League coming back, I'm keen to re-reading them. If you've enjoyed the content I've uh, provided for you guys today, please do like the video. Subscribe to Football Therapy if you are new to the channel. Well, that means a lot. You can follow me on social media as well, at Football Yannick on Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.